The Paris Olympics have come and gone, leaving behind a trail of jubilation, disappointment, and a significant financial hangover for Team GB. With a whopping £245.8 million in government and lottery funding funneled into the pursuit of Olympic glory, the question looms large, was it all worth it? For each of the 14 gold medals won by British athletes, a staggering £17.55 million was spent. This eye-watering figure forces us to confront a harsh reality. Did Team GB truly deliver on the investment, or did they fall woefully short? Join us as we delve into the financial and emotional aftermath of the 2024 Olympics and the debate over whether the price of Olympic success is justifiable. As the cheers fade and the flags are lowered, it's time to assess the cost of Team GB's Olympic campaign in Paris. The lavish funding, intended to propel British athletes to the top of the podium, instead highlights a troubling imbalance between investment and reward. With £17.55 million spent per gold medal, the return on investment appears alarmingly low. Even when including the total haul of 65 medals, gold, silver, and bronze, the cost averages out to £3.78 million per medal. But beneath these numbers lies a more unsettling truth. A significant portion of the funding went to sports that yielded no medals at all. Take hockey, for example, where £13.69 million was spent with no tangible results to show for it. Similarly, British boxing, once a reliable source of medals, saw a drastic decline, with only a single bronze from Lewis Richardson, a disappointing return on a £12.08 million investment. Sailing, traditionally a strong suit for Team GB, managed just one gold, despite receiving £22.8 million in funding. These examples paint a picture of mismanagement and inefficiency, where vast sums are poured into sports that fail to deliver on the global stage. The situation is further exacerbated by the underperformance in two of the most prestigious Olympic disciplines, athletics and swimming. Despite receiving £22.76 million and £18.92 million, respectively, these sports each brought home only one gold medal. The British Olympic Association, BOA, set a broad target of 50 to 70 medals, a vague goal that allowed them to mask the underlying issue, the scarcity of golds. In a games where gold is the only currency that truly matters in the medal table, Team GB's seventh place finished behind the USA, China, and even smaller nations like the Netherlands, raises serious questions about the effectiveness of the funding strategy. While there were moments of individual brilliance, Keeley Hodgkinson's stunning 800M victory and Alex Yee's triumphant performance in the triathlon, the overall medal tally mirrors that of the previous two Olympics, despite a significant increase in funding since Tokyo. This stagnation suggests that simply throwing more money at the problem is not the solution. Instead, it calls for a reevaluation of how and where the funds are allocated, focusing on athletes and sports with genuine potential for gold, rather than spreading resources thinly across disciplines that consistently underperform. Moreover, the culture of celebrating second and third place as if they were victories, while commendable in promoting sportsmanship, does little to inspire the next generation or justify the immense financial outlay. The BOA's defense of the results, citing the breadth of endeavor and achievement, rings hollow when compared to the cold reality of medal counts. As the post-Olympic euphoria wanes, the British public and the government must grapple with the question of whether this level of spending is sustainable or even justifiable, especially in the face of pressing social issues at home. As the dust settles on the 2024 Paris Olympics, the time for self-congratulation has passed. The hard truth is that despite the immense funding, Team GB fell short of the mark, leaving us to question whether £17.55 million per gold medal is a price worth paying. While the Olympics are a celebration of human spirit and achievement, the financial reality cannot be ignored. Moving forward, there must be a more strategic approach to funding, one that prioritizes realistic medal prospects and ensures that every pound spent brings tangible results. In an era where public funds are stretched thin, 
It's imperative that we reassess our priorities and ask ourselves if the current model of Olympic funding is truly in the nation's best interest. The time for tough decisions is now, and the future of British Olympic success depends on it.